David Smith here with one more Flip Classroom Math video. Three tips before we start. First, remember that you can slow down or speed up the playback if that helps you follow along. Second, you could turn on the captions and watch my words go by on the bottom of the screen. And last, you can pause the video at any time to catch up with your notes or think about the topic. Today's lesson covers least squares regression. Right there. So now we're going to get mathematical on figuring out the equation that creates a best fit line for data on a scatter plot. Now, let's summarize what we've done so far. The line of best fit technique that we did in our last lesson meant that you calculated the mean point, x bar, y bar, for your data. You plotted that mean point, then you sketched the line, and then you use that line on your scatter plot to find the equation for the line. This is what I would call kind of a manual method. You do this on the scatter plot, and it's a little wiggly. This part here especially, you're just going to sketch a line. You could do a pretty good job of that, but it's not going to be perfect. Different people will get different lines. So today what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a least squares regression line. And this is done with technology, most likely your graphing display calculator, but you can do this in Desmos, GeoGebra, and probably a ton of other technological tools for doing that. And this is a good technique because you throw the data from the scatter plot into the calculator, and then the calculator will tell you a line of best fit. Um, and then you take that equation, that gradient intercept equation, and you graph the line based on what your calculator told you about the data. Let's take a minute to talk about what least squares really means, because this is what your calculator is doing. So what we do is when we have a scatter plot with, with a line, we can measure the vertical distance that all the points are away from that line. So that's all of these distances that I'm marking in red. And what we want to do is we want to minimize that distance. And so the calculator can go through as many iterations as it takes to get the line just right so that these vertical distances are minimized. Now it's called least because we're minimizing the distance squares because what we actually do is we sum the squares of the vertical distances to calculate, to get that down to the least amount of the sum of the squares. So that's where this comes from. Don't worry, you're not gonna do this calculation but that's what your calculator is doing for you. So here is another example comparing rainfall to a rice harvest. And here's your data with the rainfall figures in centimeters and then the uh, tons of rice harvested, maybe for a particular field or a, a, a rice farm. And so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna turn you loose on your graphing display calculator to find an equation for the best fit line. And we're looking for this format. This is gradient intercept form. So you're gonna use your calculator, and I want you to find the R value along the way. We need to confirm that that's big enough that we have a strong correlation. And then your A, which is your gradient, and then your B, which is your Y intercept, and then go ahead and write that equation out. Now, what I have is I've put links down in the comments, or in the description, I should say, to this video, that will talk about how to do that with the TI-84 or with the TI-Inspire. Now, if you use a different tool, you're gonna to need to Google that there's probably 10 YouTube videos that will explain you how to do that with any tool that you can have to find this, this information. So I want you to pause the video. If you need to review the lesson or the, the help video for the calculator, do that and then use this data to find these values and come back. All right, I hope that went well for you. Let's check the results. Compare what you got to what I've got here. My R value is 0.918, plenty high enough for a strong correlation, so we're good there. That's a good check. My A, my slope, my gradient is 0.633. My intercept, my B is 11.3. And here's my equation, Y equals 0.633X plus 11.3. Now the IB is gonna pose some questions. It's not just enough to come up with this equation. They're gonna give you this prompt. Interpret your results. So I want you to think about this equation and these numbers that you found Pause the video, jot some things down, think real hard about what actually is going on. All right, let's see what you got. So 0.633 is the gradient. There's two main components here. We need to figure out what the gradient really means and what the intercept really means. So let's attack the gradient first. 
0.633. What that is, is the change in y over the change in x. This is just the gradient formula. And in our case, the change in y is 0.633, the change in x is one. This is over one. Now, this is not a correctly written fraction, but it will serve for our purposes. So x, the bottom part, that's the amount of rain that we get, and y is the amount of rice that comes in response to that rain. So there's one more interpretation that we can make using this information. So pause the video and think about that, jot something down. Let's see how you did. One centimeter of rain results in 0.633 tons of rice. That's the gradient, it's the amount of change in rice related to the change in rain. So every centimeter we get of rainfall, we're gonna get another 0.633 tons of rice. Now remember, this is an estimate. It's not a perfect, um, a perfect correspondence. We don't have perfect correlation, but it's gonna allow us to do a pretty good job estimating. Now let's interpret the other component, the y-intercept. I want you to pause the video and think real hard. What is the y-intercept in terms of our scenario? Think real hard and jot something down. Let's see how it did. So that's my B value, that's the y-intercept, that's 11.3. Now, it's a y-intercept. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. So that point is 0, 11.3. Now there's one more interpretation, perhaps the most important interpretation, to make regarding the intercept. So think about that and come back. Here's what you get. If no rain falls, we'll have 11.3 tons of rice. And you can get that right out of here. The x value of that point is the rainfall. Notice how that's a zero. That means zero centimeters of rainfall. And so our function, our equation, based on our scatter plot, would predict that if we get no rain, we're still gonna get 11.3 tons of rice. Let's do one more example. And now you've had a chance to go through it with your calculator one time, you should have no problem with it this second time. So here's our data average monthly temperature in degrees Celsius. So you can see, this is a pretty warm spot, okay? Maybe Phoenix, Arizona, maybe somewhere in the Middle East. It's uh, definitely high temperatures. And the electric bill costs in US dollars. So probably Phoenix. So you'll notice that we have um, prices there, cost of electric bills, and roughly speaking, the higher the temperature, the higher the bill. Okay, so what I want you to do is pause the video and do the whole thing. I want you to find your R value, your correlation coefficient. I want to find your A and your B, and then write your equation of best fit for this. Actually, it's not best fit, it's a, a least squares regression line. Let's see how you did. So my R value, 0.989, that's a strong positive correlation. No problem using this data to make predictions. My A is 8.57, my B is minus 2.23, and my equation is y equals 8.57x minus 223. Okay, so now let's do some interpretations. So pause the video and interpret the gradient in terms of our problem and interpret the constant term in terms of our problem. Let's look at the gradient. So it's pretty straightforward, just like in our last example, the gradient spells out how much change in y you get in response to change in x. So in this case, each temperature degree rise, every time it goes up by one degree Celsius, the electric bill is gonna go up by $8.57. So that's what the gradient means in this example. Now, the uh, constant term, which is the y-intercept, is a little bit tricky in this one. If we apply the straightforward analysis that we did with our last example, we would come to this conclusion. If the average temperature is zero degrees Celsius, then the bill is minus 223. Now I wrote a question mark there because you should have a question about that. Does that mean that if it's zero degrees Celsius, the electric company is gonna pay me $223 for whatever electricity I used? No, it's not gonna mean that. So this is a good critical thinking question. What's going on with this? This is clearly a bad result. We can't say this. So. Think about that real hard, and you might think about how this shows up on a graph. All right, so take a look at this really rough graph that I just sketched, and here's my bill, um, bill on the y-axis, the temperature on the x-axis, 
And here's the thing about, about reality. As the temperature gets colder and colder, we're probably going to use more electricity. Maybe we have a space heater in a couple of the rooms. Um, generally, there's less daylight, so the lights are going to be on. So we're actually going to get an uptick in our bill as the temperature gets colder and colder. And then um, as we go the other direction, there's some temperature at which we're maybe not using any electricity for heating. And so that would be our minimum line. Notice how it's not a zero bill because we have other things that use electricity besides heating. And then as the temperature gets warmer, we're running air conditioning more and more and it's getting steeper and steeper. So this equation probably covers this part of the relationship. So the relationship isn't 100% linear. What we've done is taken data, like a scatter plot, that's somewhere in this area, and we've created an equation for that line, and we could use that. Okay, so using this, we're, we're down here at a zero degree temperature, and this line, if it was accurate, would do that, and this would be our minus 223. But obviously, that's not the case. So whenever you're doing this kind of work, you always, always, always have to step back and look at the entire situation and figure out whether there are certain limitations that would apply. If you blindly went through and answered a question like, what happens when the temperature is zero degrees? And if you wrote that as your answer, you would not get full points. Now that you've watched the video, jot down a couple notes so you can ask questions at our next class. Remember that you can also watch the video again just to deepen your understanding. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe.